friends, welcome to UI Talks. It's me, Binsi Sadish. In today's class, we are going to discuss about booting process. We have been using the computer from a long time, but have never thought what steps our computer system goes through. You may have some doubts like what happens when the computer switch is pressed, how our computer gets started, what all things go in backend, so that our computer is ready to run the application program. In this video, you will learn about five things. The first one is what is booting process. The second one is, of course, how it works or the steps involved in booting process. The third one is types of booting. The fourth one is rebooting. And the last one is dual booting. So without any delay, let's get started with the first question. What is booting? Booting is the process of loading or starting up the operating system in computer's memory. Once the operating system is loaded, it's ready for users to run their applications. So, booting is the process of loading operating system into computer's memory. And one more thing is that, booting is the first and foremost task is to be performed when computer is to be used. Next, I am going to discuss about how it works or the steps involved in booting process. Before I tell you how the booting process is, let me give you a brief idea about the types of memory. As you know that, what is memory? It's an electronic holding place for instructions and data in a computer system reach quickly. Or in other words, it's a place for information stored for immediate use. There are technically two types of memories are there. The first one is primary memory, second one is secondary memory. The primary storage of a computer is called RAM, which means random access memory. In RAM, the data is only stored for a short time because it's a volatile memory, which means that it's not retained the information when the computer is switched off. The term storage refers to secondary memory, and it's a place where the data in a computer is kept. The best example of secondary memory is RAW, which means read-only memory. It's a type of computer storage which containing non-volatile memory, which means that it have permanent data. Our main memory is responsible for holding instructions will be empty as RAM because it's a volatile memory. So there will be some small set of instruction present in non-volatile memory it's called ROM. The instruction present in ROM is hardwired on motherboard. So it can't be erased. The small set of instruction present in ROM is called BIOS which means basic input output system. So, bias means there will be some small set of instruction present in ROM or in other words, ROM contain a program that enables a computer to start up or regenerate each time it is turned on. Now, I hope you all got a clear cut idea about the booting process. So, without any delay, let's head into how it works. Whenever the user clicks or press the power button of our computer, all the devices connected to our system gets the power and they are initialized. After that, the computer system goes through six steps booting process as follows. These are the six steps involved in booting process. In step one, loading of BIOS. After the BIOS is loaded, BIOS perform post operation in step two. In step three, operating system is loaded into computer's memory. In step four, System configuration is accomplished. In step 5, system utilities are loaded. And in the last step, user is authenticated. So let's look into detail the steps involved in the booting process. Step 1, loading of BIOS. So we have already discussed about what is BIOS. The small set of instruction present in ROM is called BIOS. This BIOS is loaded into computer's memory and the CPU executes those instructions. Step 2. Post Power on Self-Test In order to check the operability of all the hardware connected to our computer system, BIOS carries out Power on Self-Test, which will check all the hardware components connected to our computer system. And if any problem is found, user is alerted with post beeps and post screen message on the monitor and the booting presses stop. On the other hand, the operating system is loaded into computer's memory. After power on self-test is completed, it will go to the next step. 
Step 3. Loading of operating system. After the successful completion of POST, the BIOS will proceed to load the operating system. CMOS battery is an abbreviation of complementary metal oxide semiconductor, which have bootable sequences for searching master boot record. So, the bootable sequences present in CMOS is read by BIOS. Based on the bootable sequences, BIOS will find or search master boot record, that means MPR, from the first bootable devices. The best example of bootable devices is floppy disk, CD-ROM, hard disk and so on. If MBR is not found, it will continue to search MBR until it is found. Otherwise, which means if MBR is present, bias load bootloader. Actually, bootloader acts as an intermediate between bias and memory. The main speciality of MBR is it have some instructions about bootloader. The reason for the bias not loading for the operating system, bias is lightweight, it can't directly load heavyweight set of instructions. So bias load a special application program called bootloader. Bootloader is responsible for loading operating system into computer's memory that will eventually load OS into the memory. It's also capable for load complex set of libraries required for loading the operating system. After the operating system is loaded, it will go to the next step. Step 4. System configuration is accomplished. After the operating system is loaded, device drivers are loaded into the computer's memory so that our devices can function correctly. The best example of devices are floppy disk, hard disk, CD-ROM, monitor, keyboard, mouse, SD card, printers and so on. After system configuration accomplished, it will go for the next step. Step 5. System utilities are loaded. In the steps, the system utilities are loaded into the memory. The best example of system utilities are antivirus, network manager, backup, disk cleaner and so on. After the step, it will go for the next step. And the sixth step is user authentication. In this step, if any user authentication is not set by the user, the system will directly take you into user interfaces. Otherwise, if any user authentication is being set, which means that the system will ask for the user to enter the credentials like username and password. On receiving the correct credential, the computer system will run GUI shell, that is graphical user interface shell. Now let's learn about the types of booting. There are two types of booting are the cold or hard booting, warm or soft booting. What do you mean by cold booting or hard booting? A cold booting is also called a hard booting. It is the process in which when we first start the computer. In other words, when the computer is start from its initial state by pressing the power button, it is called cold or a hard booting. Here, the instructions are read from the ROM and the operating system is loaded in the main memory. Call booting is slow. Why? Because the operating system has to be loaded into the main memory during call booting. Next, we are going to discuss about what is warm or soft booting. It is the process in which the computer gets restart due to some reasons like setting the configuration for newly installed software or hardware. Warm booting is faster than cold booting. The reason behind is the operating system is already loaded into computer's main memory. So you don't have to reload the operating systems into its main memory. In this picture, you can see that when you click or press the restart menu, the BIOS will reload the operating system into computer's main memory. Then the system will again restart. You can also perform the warm or soft booting 
by using keystroke combinations like control plus alt plus delete or menu option next is rebooting rebooting is the process by which a running computer system is restarted either intentionally or unintentionally rebooting is sometimes necessary after installing a software program installing operating system updates to recover from an error reinitialize device drivers or hardware devices or when our system gets hacked warm booting or soft booting is also called as rebooting this is the best example of rebooting this will happens when you install a new software in your computer here the system will ask you to restart your computer to complete the installation of applications or software updates next is dual booting when we have two different operating system on our computer it is called as dual booting but as we have multiple operating system present bootloader needs to load the operating system which uses selects from the menu that is being displayed on the monitor if no action is performed within a few seconds the default operating system is loaded so let's conclude today's session let's take a look at the topics we have studied today booting is the process through which operating system is loaded into computer's memory booting process done in six steps first one loading of bios second one post power on self test third one loading of operating system fourth one system configuration is accomplished fifth one system utilities are loaded and the last one user authentication there are two types of booting available warm booting or soft booting cold booting or hard booting rebooting is the process by which a running computer system is restarted either intentionally or unintentionally we can have two different operating system in our system which is termed as dual booting i hope you will completely understand the booting process if you still have any doubts feel free to write in the comment box so thank you so much we'll see you all in our next video